welcome back to your Monday's maths lesson. So as you could tell from the title, we are still working on our fractions. I think we've got two lessons left, so it will be Monday's lesson and Thursday's lesson left on fractions, and then we'll be moving on to a brand new area of maths. So in today's lesson, we're gonna be looking at adding fractions to make a whole. Hold. I've had a few messages from older children asking to include some harder questions within these lessons which is absolutely fine and it's fantastic to know that I've got a whole range of children watching these videos so I'm going to try my hardest in today's lesson to have some questions for younger children, some questions for maybe lower key stage two, so year three and four, and I'm also going to try and include some questions for upper key stage two, so year five and six. The questions from the sheet are in fact from a book that I've got at home, but like I've said in previous lessons, if you want more of a challenge, then sections B and C are the harder questions. I will insert a picture of the answers to the questions from Thursday's lesson here for you. Pause the video here, give yourself a tick or a dot for your correct or incorrect answers. Go back through and just double check the questions that you may have made a mistake on and then press play and join me for this lesson. So like I said, in today's lesson we are going to be looking at adding two fractions together to make a whole. This is actually a lot simpler than it looks or than you may think right now. The way that I have been teaching my class to do this is to envision the fraction in a shape. So to see that fraction in a shape. So for a fraction to be a whole, the numerator and the denominator need to be the same number. So for example, if I had a circle, a circle, and I split it up into, what are these? What have I split it up into? Good, I've split it up into quarters. If I split it up into quarters, for it to be a whole, how many pieces of this circle need to be coloured in? Four, okay, so for it to be a whole, so for me to have eaten the whole of this pizza, for example, I would have needed to eat four pieces. Okay, so if I wanted to draw a whole, so the fact that I've eaten the whole pizza in a fraction, it's the same process of what we did in the last lesson, okay? So, our denominator is always what? How do we find out what our denominator is? We just count the amount of pieces, don't we? So how many pieces has it been divided up into? One, two, three, four. Okay, so there's four pieces all together. Now, the numerator, is always either how many pieces you have eaten or how many pieces are shaded in. So if I wanted to find out what all of this was, one whole would be, so the numerator would be one, two, three, four. So the numerator and the denominator are the same because it is a whole. So just to recap on that, for a fraction to be equivalent to a whole, the numerator and the denominator need to be the same. So let's move on to adding fractions together to make a whole. Now there's one rule to remember when doing this, and that rule is that when we are adding fractions together, the denominator does not change. The numerator changes, but the denominator doesn't. Why does the denominator not change, do you think? It doesn't change because the amount of pieces in that pizza or that circle or that shape that it's been divided up into, that does not change. The denominator always stays the same because we're always going to be working with that amount of pieces. So remember that, lock that into your brains. So the denominator does not change, but the numerator does. Right, okay, locked that in. So I'm gonna color in this fraction of this shape. What fraction have I shaded in there? So the denominator is how many pieces there are all together. So how many pieces has that shape been divided up into? 
four. Good, so my, my denominator is four. And how many pieces are shaded in? Because that would tell us the numerator. Three. How do we say this fraction? How do we say this fraction? We don't say three fourths, do we? We say three quarters. Well done if you remember that. Now I want to add a fraction to this fraction here to make a whole. If you feel confident to, pause the video here and work it out for yourself. Remember, the denominator doesn't change but the numerator does. And for a fraction to be equivalent to a whole, the denominator and the numerator need to be the same number. Okay, if you want to go through it with me, that's absolutely fine. So the rule was the denominator does not change. So the denominator stays the same. Now, to work out the numerator, so if I just rub, where's my, where did I put that? I don't know where I put my little rubby thing. So if I rub this out, just so I can show you exactly what I mean. So it needs to equal, so the numerator and the denominator need to be exactly the same number for it to be equivalent to a whole. So we need to get this n fraction. So what do I need to add to three to get to four? One, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so three quarters add one quarter, equals one whole. Let's just draw that, make sure, sure. So I started off with three quarters, so I need to shade in three parts. This says three quarters add one quarter equals four quarters or one whole. There we go, easy peasy lemon squeezy. If you are working on these questions at home, I would advise just while we are getting used to the method, drawing out the shape like I did with the circle and just checking your answers by doing it that way. That will help you to see if you have got the answer right or whether you need to just change it a little bit. So let's do one more together. I'm gonna to make the fraction a little bit harder this time but it is exactly the same process. So here we go, I've got three eighths add something equals eight eighths, or what's that equivalent to? A whole, well done. The numerator and the denominator are the same. Now, three eighths, I'm gonna draw my circle to help me and I'm gonna split it up into eighths. There we go. Okay, so I've got a circle and it is split up into eighths. So three eighths, I've already got shaded in. So three parts of eight pieces. When we are adding a fraction, we need to remember to keep what the same? We need to remember to keep the denominator the same. So the denominator does not change. Right, okay, so denominators are done. Now I've got to add something to my numerator to get to eight. So three add something equals eight. Three add something equals eight. Five, three add five equals eight. Let's just double check that. So now I'm gonna color in five parts of my eight pieces. One, two, three, four, five. And then we've got a hole. Well done if you got that right. I'm gonna put a few questions on the board now. If you're in year one or year two, I will put some questions here for you to have a go at. If you are in lower key stage two, so year three and year four, I'm gonna put some questions in the middle for you. And if you are in year five and six, or even above that, 
and I'll put some questions on this side of the board for you. Okay, so behind me, I have got some questions for you to answer on your own. I have put the guidelines at the top of each section, but if you want to challenge yourself or if you want to do some easier questions, that is absolutely fine. You do what you can do at home. Obviously, I'm not there to help you, so it's up to you to kind of pick which level is appropriate for you. So let's go through these then. Hopefully you found them okay. So let's start over at key stage one. Question one, we've got one half add something equals two, well, two halves. So let's draw that. We've got a circle and we've got two parts. So two equal parts and we've got one part shaded in already. Remember that this fraction at the end is equivalent to a whole. So we need to add a fraction to this fraction here, so to this half to make a whole. Remember, our denominator always stays the same, that doesn't change, because we're still only working with two parts. Now, what do we need to add to one to get to two? One add something equals two one well done so we've got one half add one half equals one whole let's just color in the other half great good work if you got that right now let's move on to down here then so we are working in what what are we working in fourths no we're working in quarters aren't we there we go quarters so we've got four equal parts now we've already got two equal parts shaded in we've got two parts of four pieces shaded in we need to add a fraction to this fraction here to get to a whole so we need to shade in all of this circle remember our denominator always stays the same now let's go up to our numerator two add something equals four two add something equals four to add two. Well done if you got that right. Let's just double check. So now we need to shade in two quarters and we've got our whole. Fantastic if you got that right. Well done. Let's move on to this section here then. Question one, we've got two fifths add something equals a whole or five fifths. Remember our denominator always stays the same. Oh, splitting the circle up into fifths is quite hard, isn't it? Let's have, let's have a go. Um, one, two, three, four, five. That's the best I can do. If you've done a better job than that at home, fantastic. So we're working in fifths. So we've got currently got two fifths shaded in. There we go. What do we need to add to two fifths then to get to five fifths? Two add something equals five. Two add three equals five. Two fifths add three fifths equals one whole. And we've coloured in that whole circle. Well done. Three ninths add something equals one whole. Now remember that our denominator always stays the same. Let's try and draw a split circle up into ninths. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's my best job. <laughs> so currently we've got three of these parts shaded in. There we go. What do we need to add to three ninths to make a whole? I'm going to count round for this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we need to shade in six ninths. One, two, three, four, five, six to get a whole. Fantastic if you got that right. 
Now, for these questions, I'm not gonna draw the circle and split it up into 35 pieces. I will be there forever, and I'm sure if you have tried those questions at home, you are feeling confident with the process. So let's just go through it. 12 30 fifths, add something equals one. So the denominator always stays the same. Now what do I need to add to 12? What do I need to add to 12? to get to 35, because remember that a whole is equivalent to 35 30 fifths. What do I need to add to 12? I need to add 23, don't I? 23 add 12 equals 35. Well done if you got that right, that one was a challenging question. Let's move down here. So we've got 11 20 thirds, so the denominator always stays the same. What do I need to add to 11 to get to 23? I need to add 12, don't I? There we go. So 11 20 thirds, add 12 20 thirds equals 23 20 thirds. Fantastic if you got those right. Those questions were all quite challenging for you all. I will now insert the questions for today here. Start at section A and work your way across. They do get harder as they go along. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you tomorrow for spellings and phonics.